Swami Sharanamayapa. I think for my uh, uh, experiences at Sabrimala, it has been a beautiful divine journey and it has been almost uh, miraculous. You know, people say that today in, in the modern times, uh, where do you see miracles? I have seen small miracles. Um, way back in 1999, I started getting a dream. And uh, I used to see this temple, people wearing black clothes, God sitting in a you know, bronzed idol, like the Panchadatu idol, and in the posture, just radiating glow. And uh, I could see it's on a mountain, in a forest. I used to get this dream continuously. And I never knew where this is, what this is, because I'm North Indian. I'm Punjabi and uh, I didn't know about Shabrimala and for three months, four months, five months, six months I kept seeing that dream. I saw a lot of tigers in my dream all the time and I said where is this place, tiger? I thought maybe Rajasthan, maybe you know uh, East India somewhere in Kaziranga or you know some place like that. Uh, maybe, maybe Sundarbans or something, but I, I just couldn't figure out what this is. And I started describing it to uh, my mama, who uh, lives in Chennai, who has a business in Chennai. He's also North Indian, but has a business in Chennai. And he says, Beta, this sounds like uh, Shabrimala. I said, what is that? Oh, he said, you should read about it. Read about Shabrimala, read about Swami Ayyappa. And I went online and I started reading all the information about uh, Swami Ayyappa, the story, the story of Shabrimala the uh, mythology of it, then the spiritual significance and beauty of it, the beauty of the oneness, the concept of people coming together. I mean, uh, in a country where we are struggling to keep the social fabric together, in a country where we are always uh, looking at division, whether it's on the basis of caste, then sub-caste, then further sub-sub-caste, um, here is a beautiful process initiated thousand years ago for people to come together in oneness with no differentiation. I was very impressed. I said, I must go there. I didn't know how to get there. I remember the first time I landed up in Coimbatore. And I said, now from Coimbatore, how do I get there? I don't know. And uh, I found one fellow who used to work in one of the mills in Coimbatore. And he said, sir, uh, I'll take you. And uh, he also didn't know much about it, I realized. And uh, he went and uh, hired an ambassador car and uh, in that ambassador car we uh, drove and because of just the traffic situation because of the hours that it took and in, in those days uh, you know uh, the crowds in Sabrimal had just grown and uh, the administration was not so fantastic yet I mean they had not understood how to deal with such crowds so I remember some 12 or 13 hours it took me just to reach by road uh, and once I re reached Pamba that I didn't know what to do after that. No Guru Swami, no first time person telling me how to do it, no 41 days Vradham, uh, no wearing uh, of the black clothes. I just reached, landed and I said, okay, I want to go. And that too during Makar Jyoti, during the Makar season. So my first time was during Jyoti. Just lakhs and lakhs and maybe crores of people on that route. I was totally lost. I didn't know what to do, how to go up. Somehow I reached up. After I reached up, they told me, you can't climb the golden steps. I said, why can't I call, climb the, the steps? They said, you haven't kept rhythm, you haven't kept the black clothes. I felt so bad. I said, oh God, what is this? Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I learn this? And then <clears throat> I, I went up and on the mountains, uh, you know, behind the, where the guest houses now are developed. Uh, on that side, uh, there was just a group of people and this fellow who had come with me from South India, he knew very little English. And uh, I knew very little Tamil and somehow we communicated and uh, just getting a simple meal. I remember there the Ayyappa uh, Seva Samiti, uh, those guys, they used to give this uh, the free food. They used to cook the, the Sambar Chawal and uh, give the free hot food. And I remember standing in the line because I was not an actor at that time, you know, nobody knew me. And I remember standing in that line, I remember eating that food in Savaving. I remember paying one rupee, two rupee and going to the public toilets, the mass toilets. Uh, I remember bathing uh, with a steel bucket at, uh, at Pamba. Uh, you know, I remember that entire experience. It was very, very uh, surreal. But then when I stood in front of uh, Swami, 
when I saw the grace of Ayyappa, it must have been for three or four seconds because I was just pushed. No VIP darshan, no nothing, just pushed. And uh, for me, it just became the most beautiful thing. It was the most amazing experience. When I stood there in that moment, when I saw the Makar Jyoti for the first time, and the whole mountain was just, you know, resonating, vibrating in that sound. Swami Sharanam Mayyappa, Om Swami Sharanam Mayyappa. Everybody's voices, millions of voices just like that. The energy I felt, I'd never felt anything like that before. I was so in a trance that I felt, boss, I have to come back next year. I have to do this again. And this time I have to learn, I have to do it properly. And uh, again, I came back the year after that and the year after that. And I came, uh, you know, kept the 41 days, kept the Vradham uh, very strictly. And uh, uh, I managed uh, uh, reaching up there. And this time, of course, I had a Guru Swami, I had a group. And uh, that really uh, made all the difference because then they taught me all the little things, you know, all the beautiful symbolism, the deeper meaning behind the whole journey. And I remember. I was climbing up in 2001, I was climbing up, uh, no, 2002, 2002, the third time I had come. I was climbing up during uh, uh, Jyoti and uh, the lines were huge, big ropes and there were fellows from Kerala police with the lathis and uh, when the rope used to open, people used to push and run and I also ran. And I remember there was a stampede the year before this, so even I ran ahead because I didn't want to get stuck in the stampede. <coughs> there was a policeman who caught me and was about to hit me with a uh, lati. And I held his lati. I said that today you are hitting me with this lati. By the grace of Ayapa, in three months' time, four, four months' time, my film with La Little is going to release. I said, when that film releases, you will be escorting me up. And it's the grace, it's the beauty, it's the divine miracle of uh, Swami Ayyappa. That became true. 2002, April 12th, company released with La Leighton. I used to talk to La Leighton a lot about uh, Shabramala. And he used to say, how you are from North Punjab, no connection with Kerala. How you are so emotional about Shabramala. And I used to feel like Kerala is my second home. I used to feel like Shabramala is my spiritual home, you know. Uh, your physical home is in Mumbai, but my spiritual home is in Shabrimala. I used to feel that emotion. And uh, my love for Kerala, my love for that annual trip just became bigger and bigger. And then more people started to grow from Mumbai. So Sonu Sood was also an actor. He started coming with my group. A uh, lot of people started coming with my group. Finally, I had a group of 15, 20 people uh, coming from Mumbai, making the journey. And of course, every year, uh, Swami made it easier gave me more love, gave me more beautiful darshan, gave me more blessings, gave me more growth. And during my most difficult times in life, I remember I had a very bad accident. I broke my left leg. I broke my knee, shin and ankle. I had a massive surgery. I had a titanium rod in my leg. And all my, my group said, you can't walk up. I said, Swami will give me strength. I'll ask Ayyapa, I'll pray to Ayyapa. And he will give me strength. And if I can't walk, I'll take a, a dolly or something like that, but I'll go. And I don't know how, you know, I was walking and uh, with that surgery, my doctors told me there's no way you can do it. But again, I'm another miracle of Ayyapa. I didn't realize, I didn't feel any pain. I was already up there in the temple. I was getting uh, uh, darshan and uh, I walked back down. And uh, I felt no pain, I felt nothing. So that is, that is the beauty, that is the grace, that is the divinity of uh, Swami Ayyappa. Over the last 15, 16 years, there have been tremendous amount of uh, miracles and uh, very uh, unusual uh, uh, moments. And it has been an amazing journey from <coughs> getting, a, getting a vision, getting a dream, and then fulfilling that dream, going and experiencing uh, the world of Sabrimala and uh, also uh, over 16 years uh, it's become like a family relationship with Kerala. So many people from Kerala police that I know for uh, now so many years they have been seeing me come 
and I have been seeing them improve and I make it a point every time to go out there and tell uh, them, appreciate them because I realize that 99% people only know how to complain. So all people come from outside Kerala and they come there and complain about the, the facilities, complain about the police, complain about the administration, complain about the some board, complain, complain, complain. But when we are coming, people should realize that this amazing journey, this one second darshan also of Swami, for that, we have to be thankful to so many people who have given their personal time, their sacrifice. It is not easy. And you have to deal with lakhs and lakhs of people on a daily basis. People from different languages, different cultures. Uh, people are upset, they're emotional, they say all kinds of things. And I've seen that. I remember once uh, I was uh, waiting in the uh, Pamba control room. And Kerala police had requested me saying that... Uh, let us uh, uh, send you an escort up, the crowd is too much and uh, can you please wait. In the meantime, I saw one little money kanda, I saw one little boy and he was lost. He had lost his uh, group, his family, he was alone, he was scared and uh, he was crying. And I think he was from Andhra Pradesh, he was speaking in Tagu. And uh, the um, SI, the, the policeman in charge from Kerala police. He came, he picked him up, he sat him on his lap and you know, Godi mein he, he fed him something to eat, he gave him biscuits, started talking to him, that boy started crying, then he stopped crying, he became comfortable, became shan. Slowly, 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 slowly we tried to find out and then he asked his name, he got his name, you know, and then how his grandfather came there in that small period of half an hour or 45 minutes. Grandfather came there, realized that he was there, collected him and took him back and thanked so profusely, saying that thank you so much. I was so worried, you know, that where's my grandchild gone? So people don't realize that behind the scenes how much work goes. You must really appreciate uh, for all the people of Kerala. Every shop owner, every uh, person in the town from Patnandatta all the way to Bamba, the way they behave with uh, the devotees, at least 90% of them are positive. And that is something that we must uh, always appreciate. I have seen the other side of, uh, uh, the positive side of the people of Kerala and how welcoming they can be. And that has really touched my heart. Experiences have been many. Uh, you know, I, I remember uh, <coughs> there was a time where uh, we were on our way back and uh, one of our friends who was also a film producer there, Gandhi Madhi Balan, he was driving the car and he fell asleep and I was sitting in the front with him and uh, my eyes opened and I shook him and I saw in front suddenly there's a bus coming straight on to us and he tried to move the car to the right, he went into the other side, went into a ditch and the whole car smashed on the side onto the side of a mountain. One of my friends was very badly hurt in his head and we had to rush him to Patnundatta to hospital there. And uh, everybody was so helpful. Everybody was reaching out, you know, really, really helping us. I remember this was at a time where I had to go to shoot for Yuva, for Mani Ratnam's film. And we were shooting uh, uh, near Top Slip. Top Slip? That uh, forest sanctuary? What is yeah, it called? Yeah, yeah. Top Slip. When, you cross, uh, uh, when you cross from uh, Polachi. Polachi. So I remember I had to go to Polachi to shoot for Mani Ratnam. And uh, at that time, going towards Polachi only, uh, I was driving and I was calling back and telling all the people here who I knew in Kerala, please help my friends, they have to go uh, back to Mumbai and one of them is badly injured. So every time there have been bad experiences, good experiences, but overall the result has always been positive. And every year, you know, that same Shraddha, that same Bhakti, that no, we must come back, we must come back again. That Bhakti was always there and we came back every year. And uh, from that time to now, the widening of the roads, the management of the buses, one-way lanes. Earlier it used to take so many hours for people to climb up. Now it just takes uh, so quickly, you know. Uh, I think that improvement has been there. And there's been some great work being done by the Shrine Board. What I feel, uh, you know, when people ask me, why you come to Shabrimala every year? I feel that today is the world of uh, electronics. We are always charging uh, our mobile battery, our laptop battery, different batteries we are charging. We forget to recharge our 
own battery, our soul, our spiritual battery. Where is that? The Atma. How do you reach out the Atma? How do you feel? You know, there's so much stress, there's so much pain, there's so much uh, negative energy around us. Every time you open the newspaper, you put on the news, people are only complaining about things. It's only negative all the time. How do you make that into something positive? When you go to Shabri Mala, you experience that. Because everybody is one. It is beautiful to see that. It is beautiful to see people helping. You are climbing up. People who don't know you also on the side, they'll be coming down, they'll be moving their uh, you know, cloth like that and just giving you air and saying Swami Sharanam Yepa, Swami Sharanam. They'll put some fruit, some glucose, something or the other on your hand coming from up, down. This will help you, encourage you, keep walking. That fundamental, that ethos, I always say that Shabrimala can be an example for world peace. The way there is unity in, in whether you are coming as a Hindu devotee, but you are uh, acknowledging, praying to Vavar and uh, up there in the sanctum of the temple you are getting tabis, you are seeing the kalmas written. That is such a beautiful uh, mix, you know, even the, the masjid uh, at Erumeli, uh, where, where the devotees first come and then they offer prayers from there and then go up. It's such a beautiful experience, the whole thing, it's such a beautifully knit secular fabric, really secular, truly secular, not secular in a political sense, but secular in an honest sense, from a heart to heart, that we are all one. Tattva Masi, you are that. Those teachings, that is very, very special. That's why I, I always tell people, youngsters especially, I tell them, you must come to Sabrimala once. You must experience it once. Don't come every year. It may be difficult for you. Maybe you don't want to come in season. Maybe you don't want to come during Makar Jyoti. You must come once. And I meet so many youngsters who keep telling me, you know, Vivekana, you, you said something like this, I read it in the papers, I read it in an article, I read it in a magazine, and then uh, I decided I want to come and experience Sabrimala. I feel very happy. I feel that uh, to promote something like this, is the greatest job of being a real brand ambassador for Sabrimala. Promote it and to promote the spiritual experience. Uh, promote it on a global scale. I want to invite people from all over the world to come and see something as spiritually beautiful as Sabrimala. Have you ever tried the cake? So sometimes when I go there, I, I uh, watch uh, Malayalam movies also. I think uh, Malayalam cinema is uh, one of the most advanced cinemas in terms of stories, ideas, concepts. Um, really in terms of a true art form, very literature rich uh, culture uh, Kerala has been blessed with. Uh, so uh, uh, I saw uh, uh, Manju Warrior's film, uh, How Old Are You? And I loved the thought of organic farming. And I really feel that uh, Kerala can show the way to not just India but the whole world in terms of organic farming. Today there are so many chemicals and poisons and things like that that we are putting into our food. Same way I feel that in an eco-friendly way, if the Devasam board and uh, if the uh, Ayupaseva Sabiti uh, members and uh, people like us, people like you and me who are devotees of Ayupa, if we can find eco-friendly solutions even in the expansion, because it looks so beautiful when you go there, even when you go to Pamba, it's so beautiful when you go in off-season. It's really, really pretty. And then when you go during season time, you see kachara everywhere, you see clothes, you see plastic, you see all kinds of uh, detergents, soaps, people using all of this. This is all so bad, it's all chemicals. And so bad for the, for the river, so bad for the ecosystem, so bad for the forest, so bad for the health of people. We can do so much better, we can do such a better job. Even the, the toilets that we set up now, I really wish they do like uh, bio toilets. You know? And if they need any help, I'm willing to support my foundation. One foundation is willing to support, is willing to come even whether it's a financial support or whether it's in just in terms of uh, awareness or bringing in uh, the technology to do it. But you should de develop bio toilet toilets over there. There's no smell, there's no stink, there's no diseases with that. It does not mean dumping into the river. And then we should become a little more strict by educating Everybody, so all the people who are coming should be in groups told in, in, in advance, requested in advance that look, this is the expectation, this is what we have, please don't dirty the place, please keep it clean, put up large boards in different languages, get people like us, say somebody like me speaking in Hindi, somebody like Lalitan speaking in Malayalam, somebody like uh, you know, Surya or somebody like Vijay speaking in Tamil, 
uh, you know, uh, get get good, good icons who believe in uh, Ayyappa Swami. Somebody like uh, Rajni Gan sir, uh, to speak about the problems when uh, we dirty the place and uh, create enough places so that it becomes clean, it does not become mess. And uh, that awareness, that change of culture is very, very necessary. Uh, because people come there and it becomes, instead of a place of worship, a place of beauty, a place of cleanness, it becomes dirty, it becomes very, very dirty. I go to the other temples in uh, all over Kerala, uh, whether it's uh, Chota Nigera, whether it's Mamuyur, whether it's uh, um, Guruva Yurappan, or beautiful, they're so clean, the temples are kept so well. Um, that should become an example. When you go to Vaishnav Devi in North India, so many people come to Vaishnav Devi. Lakhs and lakhs of people come to Vaishnav Devi. But they keep it clean. They don't throw. They don't allow people to throw garbage and kachara. That is essential. I think that is a must. Uh, we must educate people not to pollute, you know, to, to appreciate nature. Because Swami Ayyapa himself appreciates nature. Anything else? He's two years old. He's <coughs> two and a half. <coughs> my son's, uh, my son's name is Vivan Hilbert. Right? Vivan Veer means warrior of light. Means the one who removes darkness and brings positive energy, brings light, brings happiness to underprivileged and unfortunate people. So under my foundation, one foundation, I do a lot of charitable work. Uh, for the last eight years, we have built three schools and helping more than 3,000 girls and uh, who are from very poor families, backgrounds, who are being uh, put into child prostitution, forced labor, trafficking. And uh, I felt that oneness, the concept of oneness, I named my foundation One Foundation because of uh, Shabrimad, because of the teachings of Lord Ayyapa, where he says that we are all one. Tattva Masi, you are that. We are all one. We are one being, one people. And I realized that World Wide Web, it's not really the internet. World Wide Web is the interconnected net. All of us, we are all interconnected. We are all one people. And if you think that, oh, that's okay, it's happening there, it's not happening to me, that's the theory of karma. Someday or the other it will happen to me or it will happen to my family. It will hurt somebody or the other. You know, so uh, I started working towards that and now we have more than 3,000 girls under the one foundation where we give free food, free education, free health care too. We have almost 300 injured animals in our animal sh shelter over there and we have a beautiful hospital over there which we treat uh, patients from 14 villages absolutely free and uh, in all these projects I've always believed that Shabarimala has influenced me a great deal even when I went to uh, uh, the tsunami uh, post the tsunami when I went to uh, Devan Patnam village you see all my pictures from that time they're all in uh, black I was barefoot in black running around the whole place uh, because at that time it was during my fast, it was during the rhythm of uh, 41 days and uh, tsunami happened around the 25th, 26th of uh, December and uh, after that uh, I went to Shabrimala from there and came back there to Devan Patna and that always gave me inner strength, you know, spiritual strength to do for my brothers, to do for my sisters, to do for other fellow Indians, other fellow human beings without trying to look at uh, uh, community, caste, uh, personal benefit, gain, none of that. And uh, during that time also we rebuilt three villages from scratch, They're completely destroyed at that time. I actually pitched a tent and lived there. I stopped shooting. I stayed there with the poor people, like the poor people and helped them. And that energy, that motivation came from Ayapa Swami and really uh, changed my life. So we can actually to yes, uh, 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 maybe yes, uh, for my son Vivandi, I think I will be his Guru Swami. Yeah. He's only two and a half, he's too young right now to come. Yeah, maybe in another two years, years yes. Yeah, you'll, you'll be a Guru Swami in for another two years, when I become Guru Swami, I'll take him with me. He'll be a Kanni Swami. He'll be a Swami, that's right. <laughs> okay. So, thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes. Sir, I'm going to go I'm a Ayapa devotee and Ayapa bhakta, just like all of you. And I have a small message.
please keep Shabinala clean and beautiful. Like uh, when we come for our pilgrimage, uh, we try to keep our thoughts clean, our spirit clean, our body clean. The same way, uh, if Swami Ayyapa is the, is the soul, is the heart, then the body is the temple and the house of Ayyapa is Periya Reserve, all the way from Pamba to Sanidana. Let us keep Ayyapa's house clean. Let us keep his body clean. Let us help him. And uh, this is something that all of us should do. We should protect the nature and we should uh, protect the environment. Swami Sharma.